Hey, future respiratory therapist. Hey, I got a question on a comment on another video that um, inquired about this topic. And the topic is, is can you do a video on adrenergic drugs versus anticholinergic drugs? And the answer is yes, I can. Now, the caveat to that is, is that I don't know if I can do it on one whiteboard or not. And so I'm going to do my very best to break this down for you from adrenergic versus anticholinergic perspective. Now, if I can't get this done on one whiteboard, then hang tight because I have another topic coming up that's going to break down one video breaking down the sympathetic nervous system and sympathomimetics and another video that's going to break down the parasympathetic nervous system and parasympatholytics. And so that's really what we're talking about here. We're talking about sympathomimetics versus parasympatholytics. Not all inclusive, but essentially that's what we're talking about when we come to respiratory therapy drugs. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get started in this. Nathan, I appreciate your question. I'm going to try to answer it the best I can. I hope this makes sense to you. So adrenergic versus anticholinergic. Now, when you talk about this, you got to understand that you're talking about two different nervous systems. So I'm going to talk about one nervous system, adrenergics, and I'm talking about, and then I'm going to talk about another system in the anticholinergics. Okay. So when we talking about adrenergics, we're talking about drugs that do what? Drugs that mimic norepinephrine because norepinephrine is what this is saying adrenergic is adrenaline and jic means that we're going to mimic the effect of norepinephrine and you got to understand that norepinephrine norepi is the neurotransmitter that's the first thing you got to understand Norepi, that's where the term adrenergic comes from. Now we think adrenaline, okay? But what we're talking about is norepinephrine. Now when you talk about norepinephrine, ne norepinephrine you're talking about the sympathetic nervous system. And when we talk about the sympathetic nervous system and we're talking about the neurotransmitter norepinephrine, then we're talking about three specific receptors. And those are the beta-1, the beta-2, and the alpha receptors. Okay? Now, you got to understand these receptors. I'm going to break this down for you. Beta 1, how many hearts do you have? 1. Beta 1 equals increased cardiac function. Beta 2 equals bronco Dilation. Now, I ran out of room there, but that says bronchodilation. Okay? And this third one is the alpha sign. And if you'll imagine that this is a piece of thread that you're going to pull outward, you will realize that this equals vaso. vasoconstriction. Okay? So when we talk about adrenergics, we're talking about drugs that create the same response as adrenaline. We know adrenaline as norepi because that's the neurotransmitter. We know that when we're talking about a norepi, we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system and that creates a response that equals an increase in cardiac function an increase in bronchodilation, and an increase in vasoconstriction. I like to say it like this. A sympathetic response is fight or flight, right? Fight 
fight or flight. So if you're running from a bear, you want your heart to pump harder. You want your airways to bronchodilate so you can bring in more air. And you want your vessels, your systemic vessels, to vasoconstrict so that more blood is shunted toward your vital organs, your heart, your lungs, so that you can properly oxygenate vital organs. <clears throat> okay? Now, if we say that norepi is a neurotransmitter, <clears throat> and this is going to create a sympathetic response, that affects our beta 1, our beta 2, and our, our alphas that are vasoconstrictors. Sounds like stuff we like, right? So this leads to increased heart function, bronchodilation, and decreased mucus production. Do you want to stop in the middle of running from a bear to have to hawk a loogie? Absolutely not. So, so we don't want an increase in mucus. We don't want to have to stop and catch our breath because we're, va we're, because we're bronchoconstricted. And we don't want to have to stop because we, we feel hypoxemic, which makes us feel dyspneic. We want our heart to work. We want bronchodilation. We want decreased mucus production. These all sound like things that respiratory therapists want, right? So we would give drugs that mimic this, which brings us back to our adrenergics. I'm going to draw a line right here. Our adrenergic drugs bring us to albuterol. <clears throat> and levalbuterol, which we all know as Zopinex. Okay? So you need to understand that albuterol and levalbuterol are adrenergic drugs that we give to create bronchodilation. Now I just say bronchodilation because you need to understand that these two drugs are beta 2 agonist. Okay? These aren't drugs that are alpha agonist or cardiac agonist, agonist because we're not trying to do... Th these are beta-2 specific. So when you say adrenergics, you're talking about drugs that mimic the sympathetic nervous system. Adrenergic means they mimic specifically norepi and its effect. And its effect is is on the beta 1s, the beta 2s, and the vasoconstrictors, and the alphas, which is vasoconstriction. They lead to increased cardiac function. They lead to increased bronchodilation. They lead to decreased mucus production. Now, when I say this, I'm talking about two specific drugs to this date. Now, it doesn't mean, look, I understand that there's epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, there's metaproteranol, there's, there's isoproteranol, there's isoetherine, there's metaproteranol. I understand there's all those drugs, but I'm talking about acting, current day, what you need to know as respiratory therapists going out in the world in 2018. There's two adrenergic drugs that we give primarily. That's albuterol and levalbuterol, which is known as... Zopinex. Now another video will follow this breaking down the difference between albuterol and levalbuterol but we're not there yet. Our adrenergics also include all of our long-acting beta adrenergics and when I say beta adrenergic I mean adrenergic meaning the neurotransmitter I say beta meaning the receptor that they pertain to. Okay? Now, this can go on and on and on. I can talk about an alpha agonist. And now we're talking about racemic epi. I don't have enough boardroom to go into that. I will go into that in a separate conversation. 
But for right now, your adrenergics understand this concept right here. Now, when we talk about our anticholinergics, we're talking about acetylcholine. That's the neurotransmitter, okay? So acetylcholine is the transmitter, is the neurotransmitter. Now, the word anti up here means these drugs will block acetylcholine receptors okay and when we talk about acetylcholine receptors we're talking about the para sympathetic nervous system and when we talk about the parasympathetic nervous system we're talking about a nervous system that equals bronchoconstriction I'm running out of boardroom here I told you I was gonna run out of room decreased heart cardiac function and increase mucus production okay so I ran out of room but write this down Nathan parasympathetic nervous system leads to bronchoconstriction decreased cardiac function and increase mucus production. Got it? Now, pause. Time out. Sympathetic nervous system leads to increased cardiac function, bronchodilation, and decreased mucus production. We like to mimic this. We like to we like to give drugs that act like adrenergic drugs. We like to give drugs that act like norepi. On this parasympathetic side, if you have bronchoconstriction, decreased mucus production, my bad, decreased cardiac function, and increased mucus production doesn't that sound like something as a respiratory therapist that you want to block you don't want that to happen right so that's why we're going to give anticholinergics why because acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter in the parasympathetic side that leads to bronchoconstriction decreased heart production and increased mucus production. So these drugs bind to our muscarinic receptors and they block them. So they block muscarinic receptors. When we talk about anticholinergics, we're talking about, I like to say, our bromide twins. Now, this has become much more popular in the recent years, and now it's bromide triplets or maybe even quadruplets. I don't know. But we're primarily talking about Ipatropium bromide Teotropium bromide Those are the main two If you understand that Ipatropium bromide Is atrovent And Teotropium bromide Is spariva Ipatropium bromide is given every four to six hours. Teotropium bromide is given once a day. Those drugs are anticholinergics. They block the muscarinic receptors, which means they block the parasympathetic nervous system, and they result in blocking of bronchoconstriction, 
decrease cardiac function and an increase in mucus production. If you remember that, you'll be golden. Adrenergics. Two drugs to remember. I'm only going to give you two because I don't have, I'm running out of room. I'm going to give you two. The two for a working respiratory therapist. Two drugs. Adrenergic. Remember that albuterol and levalbuterol are beta-2 agonists and they result in bronchodilation and a decrease in mucus production. Stop right there. Ipratropium bromide is atrovent. Teotropium bromide is spiriva. They are anticholinergics. They block and they block acetylcholine receptors. They block the parasympathetic nervous system. They lead to a blocking of bronchoconstriction and a blocking of increased mucus production. Remember that right now. Now, tie this drug albuterol with this drug ipratropium bromide. And what you have is duonil in the aqueous solution. If it's in an MDI form, it's combivent. But if you give those two drugs, then you're giving an adrenergic drug that 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 inhibits or or not not inhibits it it promotes bronchodilation and decreased mucus production. And the ipratropium bromide blocks bronchoconstriction and blocks an increase in mucus production. In one small whiteboard, that's adrenergic versus anticholinergic drug. Watch for my future videos that break down sympathomimetics versus parasympathetics. If this didn't make sense, I'll make another video for you, Nathan. I'll actually make two more for you that break it down even further. I appreciate you asking the question. Have a great day. Go be great.